What's going on, Nito Squad? Man, I got some pretty exciting stuff for you guys today. Uh, this is something I'm obviously kind of passionate about. Um, I have a business background, marketing background, and it's just something that's always interested me. So today we're going to talk about the investors briefing taking place 8 p.m. Eastern time tonight because it'll be 9 a.m. Japan time um, at 8 p.m. Eastern. So that'll be the time to look out for it. Um, so let's hop right into it. <clears throat> so today, uh, as everyone knows, we have the investors briefing tomorrow and it's been driving everyone nuts because a lot of people really don't know what this is and that's kind of what this video is for, to explain what this meeting is, what it entails, and why people are looking forward to it so much. So a lot of people just see this as, oh, okay, I can't wait for my favorite game to be announced or whatever, which is fine because that a little bit of that does go into it, but it's really the big picture financially for Nintendo uh, for their next fiscal year. Nintendo's fiscal year goes from, <clears throat> excuse me, to from March to March. So um, the as of the end of March, 31 March, to the following March. And the reason why this is important for Pokemon Switch is because for those of you you know, everyone's just been talking about, is it 2018, 2019? Well, if it falls within the 2019 time frame and it's within Nintendo's fiscal year, it's the same damn thing, guys. It really doesn't matter. Um, if it's, you know, November of 2019, then obviously that's a much different picture. But for people that are, say, 2019, 90% of them had said, oh, well, it'll be early 2019. Well, yeah, that's still within Nintendo's fiscal year. So it really, it's a stupid argument to make. But anyways, so let's hop into it. So this is actually a thread on Reset Era for ab about somebody posted about what the briefing is, what to expect, and that type of thing. So let's kind of go through it here, and I'll hop into another segment here in a second. By the end of the month, particularly April 2018, <clears throat> Nintendo will present the results of the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2018. A financial results briefing for institutional investors and security securities analysts will almost certainly be held the day after, as is customary. Also, in conjunction with the earnings release, there is usually a news conference normally held at Osaka Exchange, which media may attend. In light of these upcoming events and their, also, and their close proximity to E3, I figured it could be of interest to take a look at what to expect. You hit the nail on the head there. So in the past, I don't know last year if this was really put in the light like it is now. I think because of Pokemon, where we've really put a lot of uh, focus on this briefing. I'm not sure if last year's was that way either, but last year we kind of already had a big picture. We knew when Zelda was coming out, we knew when Mario was coming out, and we knew when Xenoblade was coming out. So I guess a lot of people really didn't put, you know, invest a whole lot of time on focus on this. But this year we don't know anything past July. So there is a lot of focus on it this time around. So the earnings release will feature these basic items. It basically goes into consolidated statements and income and balance sheets and policy and a bunch of boring bureaucratic stuff um, so I'm really not going to track that much that too much I won't go into details about these items but of greater interest is of course the outlook for fiscal year 18 damn right in addition to the earnings release itself there will be notice of full year financial forecast differences with its results which simply shows the difference between the financial forecast announced and the actual results for the year ended March 31st 2018 the supplementary information about earnings release usually features these items. The supplementary stuff is the good stuff. Quarterly consolidated statements of income transition, foreign currency, obviously they deal with a lot of countries, launch dates of primary Nintendo products by region, launch schedule of primary Nintendo products by region, upcoming third-party software lineup. So it's discussed. The games are discussed, guys. Fire Emblem, Pokemon, Yoshi, Bayonetta, um, Smash, all those games are going to be talked about more than likely and in some way, shape, or form. So um, it, it's very important. In terms of a launch schedule for fiscal year 2018, four games are of particular interest. Fire Emblem, Yoshi, Pokemon, Smash, obviously. Those are the four big titles that we know about on the current listing right now that says 2018 or later or, well, those say 2018 or 2018 or later. And then obviously Bayonetta and Metroid say to be announced. So I would look for these two to stay the same. And then at E3, we'll have something different. You know, um, I believe they have one more of these briefings at a different time. 
But if not, then this is all investors get for the year. So that's why this is so important because if you're going to give money to Nintendo based on their earnings and based off what they're selling, well, you're going to do it with full confidence knowing what you're getting so you get a return on your investment. That's what investors do, guys. They say, I'll give you $200,000 on the basis that if you're telling me selling, say Nintendo wants to sell 20 million Switches this year, which is what they want to do. Daisy! Then... Um, I'm going to give $200,000 and expect my return on my investment. I expect to get my money back. So that's basically what investors are here for, guys. Help Nintendo finance a lot of their, their software So here's and hardware. So here's pictures. Um, it's pretty boring. <laughs> pretty boring stuff. Daisy, come on. Up. It's pretty boring stuff. Um, they have you know suits and ties guys there and paper and computers. and Yeah, it's pretty... Pretty cut and dry, pretty boring. Uh, so apparently there's a news conference. As mentioned, a news conference is usually held in conjunction with earnings release, and I expect one to be held on April 26th. These normally take place at Osaka Exchange, and Tatsumi Kimishima informs about Nintendo's operations during the fiscal year and also provides media a chance to ask questions. So that's important too. Uh, Pokemon Switch, I bet, will be... The highlight of this from a software perspective okay so here's where it gets fun in addition to slide presentation there was a QA there's there was also a QA session you may read the questions here I'll have a link to this in the description below so you guys can actually read it for yourselves I'm gonna go over a few of them um, just because it's really really fun to kind of look at what what kind of questions are asked and why they're asked so I'll put that in there you guys can read it for yourselves um, I know I know for me, when people are reading stuff to me, I just, I do this like, I have ADHD or something. I, I don't really grasp the information, so completely understand. And then he just kind of says here, for the upcoming briefing, I expect Nintendo to talk in great detail about key initiatives for Nintendo Switch during fiscal year 2018. Pokemon RPG for Nintendo Switch and Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Switch I expect to be talked about, although with no little details on features, more release date. So the reason why the release date is primarily talked about, guys, investors don't care about the freaking schedule or excuse me the the features in the games and stuff they don't care they just care about when the game's coming out so they know when to get a return on their investment when they know how much whatever it is they're investing in is going to make money during that period of time so that's all they care about um and that's why on like the last um uh, report that's listed or the most current one that's on there right now fire emblem warriors it stayed fall 2017 it never actually went to you know 18 October 2017 because fall during that time frame there were other games being announced and all investors need to know is okay there's other games going around in the fall how much do I want to invest based off that and that's pretty much what it goes by so that's pretty much this page now let's hop into the questions because there's some pretty fun stuff so the Q&A summary so the questions are being asked by the investors and then the president of Nintendo is answering the questions so I was reading through these um, a few minutes ago and like before I came home to record this and there are some pretty interesting questions that I want to highlight. Um, we'll start with question one just to get in the flow of things. This guy had a pretty long ass question. He's probably the richest one. <laughs> I would like to ask about the reasoning behind the number projected for the Nintendo Switch software shipments during this fiscal year, 35 million units. Wow. While you have stated that you will present new business flows in the future and expect to generate synergy between the smart device and game software business, it seems that the hardware attach rate for the Nintendo Switch software is in, in this fiscal year is now, comp now low compared to the rate for Wii U from the year of launch to the end of the following fiscal year. What factors influenced this determination? Was it because Nintendo Switch launched outside of the holiday season? Because you expect download sales to grow? Because you plan to bundle major titles with hardware, etc.? And he gave an answer basically saying we're planning to ship 35 million units worldwide this fiscal year for Wii and Wii U which launched during the holiday season obviously that's I mean I worked at Target during those times and we would sell four joy cons per system so the attach rate what they're referring to there is how many accessories are you selling with your consoles and the investor is saying well it's low for the switch and that's why and basically the answer the president gives here is well it was released outside of the holidays and we relied on Legend of Zelda, ARMS, and some other games to kind of help that attachment rate. Because for the Switch, it was only 2.0. Yeah. 
as opposed to 4.9 and 3.9 units per hardware unit um, with the Wii and Wii U. So the Wii wasn't just out out there crazy attachments, guys. I mean, they were selling things with the Wii left and right. So, But you can kind of get a feel for how in-depth these questions are and why it's so important. You can imagine someone sitting up there and saying, when it comes to software, what's going on with Pokemon? Because here's what their question would be, guys. If I'm an investor, my question would be, when is Pokemon going to release? And how? what is your estimation on how many consoles Pokemon will move being sold with the switch now the reason why I say that is because back when Diamond and Pearl released it was Nintendo gave a projection of 500,000 DS hardware systems were sold with Pokemon games a half a million consoles were sold with Pokemon games for the DS so that is the type of question you're gonna get from investors about Pokemon switch it's not gonna be are the graphics gonna be <laughs> Breath of the Wild or 3DS it's not gonna be what the fuck is the deal with the Lapras and Eevee? Okay, it's not going to be about that, guys. It's going to be about release date and the money. Because that's ultimately what it comes down to for investors. Um, let's see. If demand for Nintendo Switch reaches the same levels that we did, isn't it likely that the product will be sold out during the holiday season if you can't secure sufficient inventory levels by the fall? Are you taking any steps to address this? So again, what investors are concerned with is... Nintendo running out of consoles, basically. Now, we know they want to sell 20 million this year. Not 20 million total. 20 million this year. And I know in April, probably because they knew these questions would be asked, they really jump-started their production on the Switches. And he kind of goes into that a little bit. He says, planning to ship 10 million units means that we actually plan to produce more than that, including units in our wet warehouse and in transit product. We're not currently producing this full amount all at once. Yeah, they'll space it out throughout the year. That way they start to get a flow of how many Switches... Uh, retailers will need to sell and that type of thing. You don't just mass produce all at once and then twiddle your thumbs and say, okay, who needs Switches? No, that's a waste of money. They did that with the Wii U. It failed horribly because of that reason. And they really f lost it there on the marketing piece for the Wii U. And they don't want to make that mistake again. Uh, so this guy kind of gets into the software. I think it is incredible that you were able to predict ahead of time that shipments of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for Nintendo Switch would surpass the number of hardware units shipped. The late President I Iwata, Iwata, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, declared that you would be reconsidering many conventions, and I feel that your way of thinking has changed considerably in areas such as hardware launching, timing, price, software lineup, and demand forecasting. Can you explain what kinds of changes have occurred? Basically, he's saying that his style is different than Iwata's, and... He wants an explanation for what changes are going to be going on. Now, the first part of the question is important. I think it's incredible you were able to predict that because there's going to be more Pokemon games shipped out than Switches, period. So that that is going to be a dead given because they're going to sell so many Switches with them on top of those who already have it and things like that. So that's going to be a very similar thing with Pokemon. Um, he kind of goes into it um, just saying they wanted to sell more because they knew that in the coming you know months they would continue to sell switches they wanted the game to be out there they didn't want the software not to be there then no one would buy the switch it'd be pointless and what ended up happening was there was no switches to be found for like four months from the release date but legend of zelda is sitting on the shelf so it kept people interested i know for me it was like oh my god the game is there i just need a freaking console who the hell can sell me one so that's why they do it that way and then here we go. I'd like to hear your thoughts on profitability of the Nintendo Switch platform. So there he's just kind of talking about comparing the eSports and the Wii or Wii Sports um, and the Wii to Switch and Legend of Zelda, which isn't really a fair comparison because it's two different markets. Um, Wii Sports was family-oriented. Um, Legend of Zelda is not. So I guess that's really the best example they had at the time. Um, I'm not going to really touch on that one too much. Uh, let's see. So this one's important too. I'd like to know as much as you can share about the basis for your short and medium term sales forecasts of Nintendo Switch. In particular, are you expecting 10 million hardware shipments during this fiscal year because that's the number your total anticipated demand in each region led you to? Or are you looking at your software lineup for this period and predicting how much hardware you think you can sell? So basically what that question would entail is are you basing are you expecting 10 million hardware shipments? Because I have 20 million Pokemon games going out. 
So they're basing the hardware off the software. He, and he's asking, is that why you're, project, you're expecting to ship that many out? And he kind of gives an, ex, he, it's kind of redundant. He kind of asks the same question somebody else did prior. That happens all the time in the military, by the way. Holy shit. Um, yeah, so there really isn't much in the answer from an answer. There really isn't much he gave there. He did elaborate here. Um, where was... There was a question here about the 3DS. And they mentioned the Pokemon. And I wanted to read that to you guys. Let's see. Is it... I see this situation as being a little different from the huge contributions that Wii Sports is thought to have had on Wii sales at the time. Looking at the future software lineup for Nintendo Switch, I continue to see a lot of titles that cater to these longtime Nintendo fans and video game fans in general. But what is your strategy for enticing non-fans to buy Nintendo Switch? And what sort of time frame do you have for it? So again, that kind of falls into Pokemon, what they could be asking in regards to Pokemon, Fire Emblem, and those other games. Oh, here we go. So looking at sales results for Nintendo 3DS in the last fiscal year, how has your, th your thinking changed with regards to life cycles and the dedicated video game system business? In other words, how long is the 3DS going to be around? Um, you announced new Nintendo 2DS XL, which will refresh the Nintendo 3DS hardware cycle, but looking ahead at Nintendo's medium and long-term business development, including Nintendo Switch, it is possible that you will now... Is it possible, excuse me, that you will now be continually updating hardware to extend their lifespan? Basically, just keep updating the 3DS until it dies. And then he even says here, with regards to our Nintendo 3DS business, our software sales figures in the last fiscal year were boosted significantly, such as by titles such as Pokemon titles, which helped increase hardware sales and led to an overall year over year growth in sales of both hardware and software. So, guys. What do you think is going to happen with the Switch? Okay, he literally just said himself, significantly by titles such as Pokemon titles. He didn't say such as Mario. He didn't say such as Smash. Okay, Pokemon. Pokemon is the driver. And if they're selling that many units, he even said up here, a lot of it is based on the software in the question. You guys can read that for yourself. Um, I think that is super important. And, you know, a lot of us have been saying to this point, look, they want to sell a lot of Switches. Pokemon's the only game that's going to do that. For those thinking Smash is going to do that, if that were the case, if Smash were on the same level as Pokemon, he would have said uh, Pokemon and Smash. But, no. Pokemon is the one. Pokemon moves consoles. So they talk about the 2DS and 3DS there. There are concerns that shipments of Nintendo Switch will not meet demand for up to two years, as happened with Wii. How much do you plan to increase Nintendo Switch production during the first quarter of this fiscal year compared to the fourth quarter of the previous fiscal year? Again, redundant. We are planning to ship 10 million units of the Switch. We shipped 2.74 million last fiscal year. Blah, 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 blah. A lot of redundancy. Um, which one was this? And take an interest from the Okay. Uh, talk about retirement there. Huh. Specific question about Animal Crossing. So, the Animal Crossing application for smart devices was not discussed this time. What was the reason for this? As I discussed previously at the policy briefing, we will release the Animal Crossing application for smart devices this fiscal year. So, he literally comes out and says in the briefing, we will release it this fiscal year, which was Pocket Camp. We will announce the specific release date before we commence distribution. So that's how specific they get, guys. Like they are, boom, ask the question, you'll get an answer. It's not going to be, well, Pokemon, eh, we just, eh, we don't know. And if they do that, they are losing some serious money. I hope Game Freak really gave them a good, a good time frame and really good information because that's kind of how this goes too, guys. Nintendo gets this information from its developers. They get this information from whoever's developing the games, creating the games, Game Freak, um, Retro, um, all these different companies. Give them this information for their games and say, here's what to expect. Relay this to the investors. And 
you know, they brief. So that's basically it, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I really have to get back to work now, but um, I didn't want to risk not putting out a video this week because I'm having some friends come over and I'm going to be really, really busy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this shed some light on the investors briefing and, you know, what this really means and why it's so important because money's what it's all about, guys. And the financial aspect of this stuff is going to shed a lot of light. I would think the report for the new thing, according to the Reddit user, would be the 27th. And on Friday, um, which is Thursday tomorrow, because Thursday evening tomorrow. So expect some pretty interesting information to come out over the next four or five days, because once that's posted, we'll know. We'll know a lot of things. So if the game doesn't, if the Pokemon Switch game doesn't get announced by then. So we'll see. But again, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope I helped. I hope I gave some good advice and some perspective. You guys have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week. If I don't talk to you before then, God bless. Talk to you guys later. Peace.